Thank you, Louie. Can you hear me? Am I coming in clear? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Maria Belen Acosta, Chairperson of uh, Mindanao Development Authority. Honorable um, Almario, Representative of the Second District of Davao Oriental. Father Mar Stan of the Society of Jesus, President of Xavier uh, Ateneo University, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Roy Ponce, University President of Davao Oriental State University, and Dr. Urbeta, the President of BIDS. Good afternoon. Allow me to uh, present, uh, as mentioned, uh, the paper as uh, the representative of the, the authors of, of this paper which uh, proposed the this topic to the uh, as to be the theme of the development policy research month in the next slide we are presenting the two forces the world is undergoing a green transition faced with the issues related to climate change and disaster resilience countries have agreed to collectively respond to the challenge of climate change in the 2021 Glasgow Climate Pact, more commonly referred to as COP26, countries have dedicated the 2020 to 2030 as a decade for climate action and support with the goal of reducing emissions and capping the global average temperature rise to 1.5 degrees. As countries have adopted their national policies with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, they have also engaged in a gradual transition to green economies as part of the green transition. Countries have also, are also exploring the shift to smarter production and consumption systems. And as the benefit cost ratio of renewable energy rises, green energy projects have multiplied. At the same time, countries are facing rapid digitalization. In parallel to their green transition, countries have worked towards the adoption of digital technology, such as the digitalization of services and payment systems to improve service delivery, support businesses, and combat corruption and tax evasion. Countries have also implemented policies fostering the emergence of a digital economy, including smart manufacturing, fintech, e-health services like telemedicine, and smart agriculture. The world has also begun adopting advanced digital technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, Internet of Things, blockchain technology, and others, which are converging with nanotechnology, biotechnology, and cognitive sciences to form the bedrock of the fourth industrial revolution. Indeed, countries of all income levels are engaged in this dual transformation, the green transition and digitalization. But first, let me define what is this dual transformation. In the next slide, we see that the dual transformation or twin transition refers to the mutually interdependent transformations of digitalization and adoption of green processes occurring simultaneously across countries. The digital transformation of the economy and society and the shift to a sustainable model of production should be viewed as closely intertwined and simultaneous. Digital innovations are indispensable enablers of green transition. A number of cases have been documented that provide examples of how digital technologies enable the transition of businesses and economies. Advanced technologies such as sensors or satellite data, which enable the gathering and reporting of precise information on tree species and bi biodiversity counts, have been utilized by FAO and World Bank to monitor the implementation of environmental standards in illegal logging and fishing. Another example, uh, documented by Bangnina et al. in 2020, illustrate the importance of the global positioning systems, IoT and sensors, in analyzing global supply chains and identifying areas for reducing emissions. Finally, Giggler 2020 explained how blockchain can be a powerful tool to improve the transparency, accountability, and traceability of greenhouse gas emissions. Blockchains can be catalyzed through smart contracts to better calculate, track, and report the carbon footprint of processes across value chains. Meanwhile, 
The greening of digital technologies has become a critical success factor for digital transformation and upgrading. As the global value chains evolve and the governance of the lead firms shift to the use of more sustainable production processes, all stakeholders um, along the value chain would be forced to acquiesce to the change in policy and ensure technologies adopted support environmental goals. Only firms with the existing capability to adopt technology and innovate processes would be able to, to be successful in maintaining participation in global value chains. An example would be the apparel industry in Sri Lanka, in which lead firms following environmental standards like the ISO 14001 and the LEED were able to induce green transition to the suppliers engaged in the production process. The next two slides show the SDGs are related to the dual transformation. I won't go through all of them in the interest of time, but let me just highlight SDG 2, Zero Hunger, as I think this is very important, especially for the Philippines and even for the region, for, for Mindanao. SDG 2 is about zero hunger. And how is this related to the twin transition? A sustainable agriculture and food production are critical to achieving zero hunger. This SDG is directly related to the, to the green transition and digitalization through strategies related to the optimization of food production and distribution, as well as the reduction of food waste. Let's proceed to the next slide. Allow me to mention um, four SDGs closely related to the green transition and digitalization. For example, SDG 12, which is on responsible consumption and production. This SDG is closely linked to the green transition as it focuses on promoting sustainable consumption and production patterns. Achieving this goal requires the optimization of resource use, the reduction of waste and emissions, and the promotion of a sustainable production process. Another would be SDG 13 on climate action. This SDG is directly related to the green transition as it focuses on taking urgent action to combat climate change's impacts. Achieving this goal requires the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and the promotion of renewable energy sources. Finally, SDG 15, Life on Land. The promotion of sustainable land use practices that supports the conservation of biodiversity and natural ecosystems, including the reduction of deforestation, land degradation, and soil erosion, makes this SDG related to the green transition. Digital transformation is related to the use of the digital technologies to support the monitoring and management of natural resources, including the promotion of sustainable agriculture and the restoration of the degraded ecosystems. So what these two slides really do show is that the twin transition is related directly or indirectly to the achievement of the SDGs, to which we are all, all striving to accomplish. Recognizing the emerging, uh, next slide please, recognizing the emerging global and regional trends pushing the Philippines towards this dual transformation, the Philippine Development Plan has identified strategies related to this dual transformation. The 2023 to 2028 Philippine Development Plan recognizes the environmental forces and digital trends as factors shaping the future of the Philippines. To this end, the underlying theme of transformation has been adopted by the Philippine Development Plan. Strategies related to the digitalization and green transition of production sectors have been identified in the various chapters of the Philippine Development Plan. Let me... Uh, I won't go through all of them, but let me just mention com um, the strategies related to communities. Communities are also encouraged to adapt to the dual transformation. One strategy is the adoption of green features in housing and community design, such as the renewable energy, green roofs, rainwater harvesting systems, rain gardens, permeable pavement, green construction materials, nature-based storm drainage systems, gray water recycling systems, and energy-efficient windows with reference to the green building code. Construction companies are also encouraged to conduct R&D to adopt green architecture and additive manufacturing, which would reduce production costs. 
I think it's also important to mention that there are strategies identified which are related to labor and employment. These would include the government creating a database of green jobs, which in implementing the Green Jobs Human Resource Development Plan and intensifying the integration and mainstreaming of green competencies in Tibet and education programs. Aside from the Philippine Development Plan, other government documents have also acknowledged the role of technology in the green transition. The foresight document of the government entitled Pagtanaw 2050 or Looking Ahead, which was published by the National Academy of Science and Technology in 2021, listed the a number of technologies for the environment and climate change operational area. We also found out that the DICT is going to release their uh, plans for this administration, which also highlights the role of ICT in the achievement of the green transition. So what this tells us is that government plans are also embracing the idea of the twin transition and preparing the Philippines to adapt to these twin forces. However, in the next two slides, there remains questions that need to be answered to ensure that this dual transformation supports the achievement of a sustainable future for the Philippines. For instance, what would be the impact for local industries? For developing countries, the dual transformation of green transition and digitalization involves accelerating a process of industrialization that would normally take decades. So industries are now undergoing these, do these two transformations in parallel. Digitalization entails businesses using digital technology, which would include data analysis, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, internet of things, and even edge computing for all aspects of the business process, from product development, production, operations, sales, and even materials recovery. Meanwhile, green transition entails designing, building, and scaling products and operations so that these become more efficient, more sustainable, and more resilient. Sustainable design or circular practices not only reduce a product's environmental footprint, but also improves the resource use efficiency, making manufacturers more resilient to supply chain, supply chain shocks. The intersection of digitalization and green transition is resulting in opportunities for servicification as well. E-invoicing and two-way communication platforms have helped tailoring services adapt to the specific needs of customers and change behavior towards greater conservation. Smart water metering has improved the water infrastructure and helping to alleviate droughts and water shortages. Let's look at the, si at the labor side. No? So how will the dual transformation affect work? Nations across the globe are facing enormous challenges to adapt and anticipate the skills needed by labor markets due to the green transition and digital transformation. New technologies and innovations in green energy and sustainable practices require not only the development of new skills and updating of new ones due to the transformation of existing professions. According to a number of studies, um, one of which is linked uh, in 2023, one of the biggest challenge to achieving the green transition and digital transformation is the lack of skilled workers. The scoping study that we conducted uh, analyze the current trajectory of green skills. Green skills growth in the labor market and found that the human capital needed to meet sustainability targets are insufficient. While more workers are transitioning into green and greening jobs than those who are leaving, the total number of workers transitioning into those jobs are still really low. The transition to the green economy and increased use of digital technologies will require new skill sets and competencies, which are currently in short supply in developing countries. So what are these skill sets? Examples and these skill sets and competencies related to the dual transformation include digital literacy, data analysis, understanding of re renewable energy, sustainable design, project management, adaptability, communication skills, and green entrepreneurship. How the green transition will result in job in the loss of jobs in the non-green or the brown activities is also a major concern. Workers engaged, for example, in fossil fuel extraction, production of single-use plastics, or those who are those industries, industries which are high greenhouse gas emitting, 
are particularly at risk as they are the first ones affected by climate policies and regulations. Workers and trainees in other sectors will be affected eventually as the whole economy's de decarbonization plan expands. The next slide talks about what is happening outside, no? so trade and investment. So the dual transformation, uh, could you go back to the 16? Okay, please, thank you. Um, will disrupt international value chains in four stages. So first, it will lead to changes in our consumption, our consumer behavior and demand, demand preferences. This will also lead to changing the demand for less resource-intensive and more environmentally friendly products and services. Second, these changes in consumption would be enforced in the value chain through various types of new designs, standards, and specifications. Third, changes in the governance regime of the value chain will create green entry barriers and green windows of opportunities. On the one hand, green entry barriers are created because governance patterns arising from the greening may translate into new constraints in meeting these requirements for suppliers making the global value chains more difficult or forcing them to exit. On the other hand, windows of opportunities exist for certain suppliers who can develop sustainability, sustainability capabilities, leveraging them to their advantage. Finally, firms would undergo various innovations to reduce their ecological footprint. Given this, digital platforms and certification which have been important factors in facilitating global value chains through an intensified flow of intermediate inputs across um, global value chains, value chain segments, would be affected by the dual transformation. One direct impact would be the development of new tasks related to green transition facilitated by digital technology. Digital platforms have become another governance avenue that have the capability of facilitating the greening of firms and their production processes. In the next slide, we look, about, look at the role of science and technology in the dual transformation. The increasing use of AI and other advanced technologies presents both opportunities and challenges. While AI has the potential to revolutionize many industries and improve efficiency, it also raises concerns about job displacement, privacy, and ethical use. For this dual transformation to support the achievement of a sustainable future, countries will need to raise their commitment to science, technology, and innovation, including research and development. Recent UNESCO figures show that the advanced economies still accounts for a majority of research expenditure, researchers, publications, and patents. Although research expenditure rose in the most regions, inter, um, international regions, no? Between 2014 and 2018, 80% of countries still invest less than 1% of GDP in R&D. In some cases, researcher population has risen faster than related expenditure, leaving less funding available to each researcher. I've mentioned earlier AI, so now let us focus a little bit more on this new technology, which is artificial intelligence. Next slide, please. Artificial intelligence refers to the use of big data in machines programmed to simulate human intelligence. Computer scientists have taken another step to automate AI in a process called machine learning, a subset of AI where computer intelligence automatically learns from experience without being explicitly programmed. They even took it one step further to make computer systems solve complex problems in the process called deep learning. And this is a subset of machine learning where artificial neural networks inspired by the human brain learn from large amounts of data and use that information to solve complex problems, even when using data set that is very, even when using a data set that is very diverse, unstructured, and interconnected. But why do we, we need to care about AI? AI may have transformational impact by helping countries unlock the power of innovation. And zeroing in on the domestic economy, investing in AI benefits companies in a number of ways. Increased speed of production, reduction of cost, improving under understanding complex processes, transforming engagements, and sometimes even fortifying trust. But there are negative consequences. AI and other technologies risk the widening of gap between rich and poor countries, 
by shifting more investment to advanced economies where automation is already established. A recent article by The Economist shows that 80% of Americans would have at least 10% of their work tasks done by AI tools. For some workers, it can be as high as 50% of their work tasks without loss in quality. So these workers belong to industries which rely heavily on programming and writing skills, such as legal services, financial, and insurance services. Telemarketers could be made redundant as well, which teachers, especially even teachers, especially those in languages, history, and literature are next in line. There is, however, some glimmer of hope as jobs that need human Essential human qualities such as empathy and charisma have been overlooked by these studies. So AI tools will need handlers, which may, up, which may end up creating new jobs. In the next slide, we look at the opportunities and challenges of artificial intelligence in this dual transition. So how can the country um, prepare for the advent of AI? The country can draw lessons from legacy companies and their AI journey. So sub-suggestions would include formulating a clear set of ideas and principles about what they want to accomplish through AI. Begin by investing in data and analytics, preparing an IT architecture, and enabling integration of AI with the workflow of government agencies. Finally, let us look at the role of government. And I, let me end. Um, this is going to be my last slide. I want to um, talk about the role of government because this is a, a forum that has a lot of, um, hopefully a lot of uh, local governments listening. So we want, I want to um, encourage them to think about their environment and their um, areas of, of um, expertise. And this, this framework um, by Giggler and Microsoft in 2023 um, allows us to assess um, the four stages of um, dual transformation for, for governments. The first stage is fragmented, which is characterized by governments setting ambitious targets aligned with SDGs uh, and Paris Climate Agreement. However, detailed plans have not been laid out and there is a lack of standardization for incorporating climate and environmental risks into the strategic planning. In this stage, governmental action is tied to addressing regulatory failures and disaster response rather than a proactive resilience and adaptation, adaptation planning. Uh, let me skip the two in between and let me just talk about the one in the last one because I think this is the one where we really want to be, the transform. So at this stage, sustainability concepts are already embedded within government departments and the culture of sustainability emerges across its core services and across stakeholders. This results in inclusive climate first policy making and senior leaders are engaged in overall planning and implementation of green technologies. They play a key role in communicating the benefits and the vision for government sustainability journey. Governments can walk the talk by adopting policies to counter the environmental impacts of their own operations. So I encourage everyone to let us try to work to be a transformed government that already incorporates um, the twin transition in our daily life. So let me end here and thank you very much for your attention.